a routine fire call to a local fertilizer plant tragically ends up being the crew's last mission. The first responders had no clue that their equipment would prove futile against the explosive force about to tear through the small community of West Texas. As investigators sift through the rubble, disturbing revelations about the plant emerge, raising troubling concerns of the silent threat facing countless other towns. The city of West is your typical small town in central Texas. It lies just north of Waco and is home to 2,800 people. But on April 17, 2013, the community was ripped apart by a massive explosion. That evening, emergency dispatch received a 911 call about smoke at the West Fertilizer Company plant just before 7.30 p.m. West Fire, the uh, West Fertilizer, is uh, one of their bills is on fire. There's uh, heavy smoke coming out of the top of it. The company was known to sell and stockpile agricultural chemicals and fertilizers to surrounding farmers. And because it was spring, the plant had ample commercial fertilizers on site most notably in hydrous ammonia and ammonium nitrate. This is a response to West Fertilizer Plant. They have uh, a fire out there again. West Fire out to West Fertilizer Plant. Minutes after the call, the volunteer West Fire Department was dispatched. The first fire truck pulled up at 7.39 p.m. and was met with the grim sight of the building being consumed by the raging fire. The crew rushed in to battle the blaze, unaware they were racing towards a catastrophic eruption. The routine fire morphed into an inferno of disastrous proportions in just minutes. Additional firefighters are summoned to the scene as the situation continued to escalate. Just 10 minutes later, two massive explosions rock the stage, the second unleashing a cataclysmic fireball engulfing the seed store. The blast was so immense, it was felt more than 80 miles away and registered as a 2.1 magnitude earthquake. Shortly after the explosion, another call comes in to dispatch, confirming their worst fears. We need every ambulance we can get this way. A bomb just went off inside here. It's pretty bad. We got a lot of firemen down. The devastation was enormous, carving out a crater stretching 93 feet wide and delving 10 feet deep into the earth, destroying the seed and fertilizer buildings entirely. The tremendous force knocked over a nearby rail car transporting 100 tons of ammonium nitrate and warped the main railroad tracks. Miraculously, the chemicals did not explode. The explosion tore through the town, shattering house windows more than half a mile away. Still shaking up. I, I haven't been, I've been stopped shaking up since the whole thing happened. I mean, that's probably the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. More than 260 people were injured, and nearly half of the town's 700 homes bore some signs of the impact. The damage extended to the destruction of three schools, a nursing home, and a 50-unit apartment complex. The economic loss to the town would ultimately total more than $230 million, but the loss of life would be even more shattering. As the dust settled over the small town, questions emerged about the cause of the fire and subsequent explosion at the fertilizer plant. Days later, federal and fire investigators started to sift through the debris, uncovering some astonishing facts. The facility had been storing an estimated 40 to 60 tons of ammonium nitrate in bulk. The nitrogen-rich chemical looks like coarse table salt and is used by farmers as a fertilizer. But mishandling or adverse conditions can make it highly explosive. The plant comprised two main structures. One served as a chemical warehouse, shop, and office, while the other stored bulk fertilizers. The processing facility, which measured about 12,000 square feet, was primarily constructed of wood. The beams used to create partitions between the various stored fertilizer compounds were built from plywood. Furthermore, the building did not have sprinklers or any other fire resistance, leaving it vulnerable to ignition and spreading flames. After an extensive, month-long, $1 million investigation, the exact cause of the explosion remained unknown. Experts initially thought anhydrous ammonia, a flammable gas, might have triggered the blast. But the plant's anhydrous ammonia tanks, though damaged, did not explode. It was, however, clear that the fire started in the seed room, 
right next to a storage bin holding 150 tons of ammonium nitrate. During the incident, about 28 to 34 tons of this chemical exploded, generating a force equivalent to detonating 15,000 to 20,000 pounds of dynamite. But how can this happen when the facility was regulated by no more than seven state and federal bodies, including DHS, EPA, OSHA, the U.S. Department of Transportation, the Texas Department of State Health Services, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, and the Office of the Texas State Chemist? Gross federal understaffing and bureaucracy seem to have failed the people of West Texas, as regulatory agencies hadn't inspected the facility for several years. According to records, the EPA had last visited the plant in 2007 due to an odor complaint. OSHA, responsible for workplace safety, hadn't seen the site in 28 years, even though it stored potentially dangerous chemicals. During the last visit in 1985, OSHA found one serious violation, resulting in a mere $30 fine. In 2011, the West Fertilizer reassured the EPA in an emergency planning report that their anhydrous ammonia storage tanks posed no significant fire or explosion risk. This was indeed evident, and the tanks remained unscathed despite the blaze and explosion at the site. Then, in late 2012, the company's EPA filing indicated they were storing a stockpile of 270 tons of ammonium nitrate on site. That's 1,350 times more than what is typically considered safe. Shockingly, Homeland Security told investigators the plant had seemingly failed to disclose its ammonium nitrate inventory. This is despite legal mandates that they be informed when more than one ton of ammonium nitrate is on a premises. Investigators found that the fertilizer plant was a ticking time bomb, an accident waiting to happen. The company had no available pre-incident plan and no effective emergency response was in place. While the fire department was familiar with the chemicals regularly kept at West Fertilizer, they had never undergone formal training to prepare for a fire or a chemical emergency specific to that plant. Based on the Chemical Safety Board's report, West Fertilizer Company was fined $118,300 for violating several rules regarding handling hazardous materials. Three years after the initial investigation, the ATF ruled that the cause of the fire was a criminal act and offered a reward up to $50,000 to help find those responsible. Meanwhile, safety experts argue that inspections and penalties don't address a core issue, the proximity of residential and public spaces to the plant. Despite the potential hazards, zoning restrictions did not limit residential or commercial occupancies from encroaching on the facility. As a result, a park was located within 150 feet, an apartment complex at 370 feet, West Intermediate School just over 200 feet, and the local high school at about 500 feet from the plant. According to fertilizer industry officials, the risk of another incident like the one in West isn't just a concern in Texas. The agency discovered 1,351 facilities in the U.S. storing ammonium nitrate. Many communities became aware of how close these are to homes and schools. But could there have been more nefarious elements at play in West? The West fertilizer plant had reportedly faced repeated theft attempts over the years with 11 reported burglaries in the last 12 years leading up to the disaster. Intruders often tampered with anhydrous ammonia tanks, a key ingredient in making the illicit drug methamphetamine. Similar thefts were a problem in rural America. The tanks were often poorly guarded. Some people believe a break-in on the day of the disaster could have led to an ammonia leakage, causing the subsequent fire that led to the explosion. But to date, investigators could not find any witnesses to support this theory. After the disaster, the West Fertilizer Company, owned by Adair Grain, filed for bankruptcy. The facility was insured for just one million U.S. dollars. In the aftermath of the explosion, lawsuits quickly started piling up. The city of West, along with hundreds of residents and businesses, sued Adair as the plant owner. Fertilizer manufacturers, CF Industries, and El Dorado Chemical, and other product suppliers. 
plaintiffs sought compensation for property damage, injuries, and a loss of family from the explosion. Their legal claims argued that ammonium nitrate was inherently dangerous and was sold unthinkingly without sufficient warnings. Most of these cases have been settled confidentially out of court. The city received a $10.44 million settlement with defendants for infrastructural damages not covered by insurance or grants from federal agencies. While the proposed safety recommendations stemming from the blast highlighted steps needed to help prevent a similar tragedy in the future, very little has changed about the policies governing ammonium nitrate. To date, the EPA has still not included ammonium nitrate on the list of chemicals requiring increased monitoring, and OSHA has not made it mandatory for facilities with ammonium nitrate to have non-flammable storage bins and fire sprinkler system. With a volatile inventory like ammonium nitrate left unchecked across more than two dozen installations in Texas, it's not a question of if, but only when, a facility will explode again. The violent blast claimed the lives of 15 people, 12 of whom were first responders to the blaze, while three civilians also perished. Today, a memorial site lies 100 yards from where the plant once stood. Its eternal flame fountain surrounded by 15 plaques, each with a photo and biography of each person who died on that fateful evening. Watch this episode next if you found this video interesting. Please add a like and leave a comment if you want to support the channel.